In this question, we are asked to find a symbolic expression for the components of the net force that is acting on the charge labeled positive Q. And to do that, what we first must do is draw the forces acting on the charge marked positive Q. For example, let's consider the two charges circled here. We know that they are both positively charged, so there would be a repulsive force acting on each charge. Now, that would mean that positive Q would be pushed upward along the positive Y axis. And we might label that force F Q comma 2 Q, just to indicate that that electrostatic repulsive force is between charges Q and 2 Q. Now, what we'll also do is fill in some values into the following chart. Now, we have labeled charge pair first in this chart, and in this case, the charge pair would be between Q and positive 2 Q. They're both positive. R is going to represent the distance between them. We can see from the figure that the distance between them is D. F would be the actual electrostatic force. Now, if we scroll up, we know that the electrostatic force is represented by this equation right here. So what we could write down is K sub E. Now, we have absolute values on these charges, but our charges are both positive, so we don't necessarily need the absolute value symbols. We would just have Q multiplied by 2Q. And then we're going to divide that by the distance squared. Now, we already indicated that the distance was D, so this would be D squared. Next, we're going to find the X and the Y components. And to do that, you simply take your force and you multiply it by either the cosine or the sine of an angle. But let's get this angle straight. We can return back to the figure. And what we should do is superimpose onto the figure a Y axis and an X axis on that charge right there. Now, we can see that the angle, as long as we measure it, from the positive x-axis, which is what we should always do. Measure your angles from the positive x-axis. The angle in this case to the force would just be a 90 degree angle, that angle right there. So what we'll do is go back to the chart and we'll take the force, which is k sub e. Now q times 2q, we can actually write that as 2q squared. So why don't we put the 2 right there and the q squared right there, divided by the distance squared, and then multiply that by the cosine of 90 that would give us the X component. For the Y component, something very similar, but we'll use the sine of 90. See if we can squeeze it in here. Okay, that completes the first repulsive electrostatic force acting on the positive Q charge. Now let's consider a different charge pair. We might wanna clean up the figure here just a little bit. And the other charge pair is between positive Q and negative Q. So for that charge pair in our chart, we could write down positive Q and negative Q. Now the distance between those charges will need to be obtained by using the Pythagorean theorem. So we need this distance right here. Now, if we look carefully, we have ourselves a right triangle that we can outline in yellow. Furthermore, not only is it a right triangle, but it is a right triangle with two equal legs. So they're both marked D. And that would mean we can actually use the Pythagorean theorem to prove that the hypotenuse here would be D radical two. If that doesn't make sense where that comes from, let me know in the comments and I can show you where it does come from. But for any right triangle where the two legs are equal, you basically just take the length of one of the legs, which in this case is D, and multiply it by the square root of two. So that's the distance between them. We'll fill that into our chart just to help us stay organized, D radical two. Now for the force, we take the KE we multiply it by the absolute value of the first charge, which is just Q. Now notice here you're gonna be multiplying by the absolute value of the next charge, which is negative Q, but because it's absolute value, you will just use positive Q. And then you'll divide this by the distance squared. Now be careful here, it's D radical two in parentheses and then square that whole quantity. Now we will find the X and Y components. So for that, we're going to need the cosine of theta as well as the sine of theta. And here's where things could get a little bit tricky. Let's look at the diagram. We know that in this right triangle, because the legs are equal, that this angle would be 45 degrees. And so would this angle be 45 degrees. And furthermore, we know that this angle would be 45 degrees, just because we have a 90 degree angle between the Y and the X axis. Now, 
Remember what we said about measuring your angles. You want to measure them relative to the positive x-axis, which we have outlined in green. Let's draw the force in. Remember, we're looking at the force between positive Q and negative Q. They are opposite in sign. One's positive, one's negative. So that's a, an attractive force. Opposites attract. So you would have a force going this way, pointing towards the negative charge because the negative is attracting the positive towards it. Now the angle we really want, again, is measured relative to this green X axis. We can say 45 degrees, but just be careful because in fact, it's negative 45 degrees. When you measure an angle in a clockwise fashion in physics and in mathematics, that clockwise angle is negative. So the truth is this is actually a negative 45 degree angle that we need. So with that in mind, we'll come along over here. We'll take our force, which is K sub E multiplied by Q squared. Notice Q times Q is just Q squared, of course. Also, let's simplify the bottom here. We're squaring D, which is going to make D squared, but we're also squaring radical two. Radical two squared is just two. And then you're going to do the cosine of a negative 45 degree angle. And then for the Y component, you'll have almost the same thing, except you'll be using the sine of negative 45 degrees. This is gonna be very close, there we go. Okay, so that completes the two electrostatic forces acting on the charge mark positive Q. Now, we need what we call the resultant electric, electrostatic force. So we might just call this R for resultant. And to get the resultant, what you're gonna do is just add the X components together and also add the Y components together. Now we're actually gonna run out of room here, so it might be better just to come over here and say that the force for the x direction will equal the two x components added together. So there is the net force for the x direction. We'll do the same thing for the y direction by adding the y components right here together. And so there is the Y component. Now we just need to simplify this. Let's take note of a couple of things. First of all, cosine of 90 degrees, you can confirm this on your calculator, but of course that is zero. So this entire term right here, because it's multiplied by zero, is gonna zero out. And that would, would leave us with just this expression for the X direction. For the Y direction, the sine of 90 is just one. So we're not as lucky there, but we can basically cross that out. So to get the final value for the X component, and why don't we make just a little bit of room here. What we might do is evaluate the cosine of negative 45 degrees. So you could punch that into your calculator. That's gonna be radical two over two. So you have K sub E times Q squared over two D squared times radical two over two. Now multiplying the numerators across would give us radical two K sub E Q squared over, and then multiplying the denominators across would give you four D squared. So you could leave it like that if you wanna be fancy, or if you wanna simplify it, you can pick up your calculator and divide the square root of two by four. And if you do that, you get 0.354. So in fact, you can write this as 0.354, and then you would have K sub E Q squared over D squared. And that would be the correct answer for the X component. Now for the Y component, you could get fancy here. You could find a common denominator. So you could multiply this denominator by two, multiply the numerator by two as well. That would make this a four. So then we would have four K sub E Q squared over 2D squared. And then you could do, well, this already has a denominator of 2D squared, so we can actually go ahead and just add the K sub E Q squared. The sine of negative 45 is actually negative radical two over two. So in fact, this gets a little messier than I had anticipated, but let's just do ourselves a favor. Let's factor out the K sub E Q squared. So K sub E Q squared times you're gonna have four, let's see, you'll actually have minus radical two over two, and then this will be over two D squared. Now, to get it into decimal form, you can take this value and then divide it by two. So you might wanna use your calculator here, four minus radical two over two, and then divide that by two, gives you 1.65. So you end up with, for the Y component, 1.65 K sub E, Q squared, 
over d squared. And there would be the final expression for the y component. And then again, scroll back up here, the final expression for the x component was this.